Hello there. This evening, well, it's evening right now, we're going to be talking about rational exponents, which means I have to admit there's another rule of exponents we haven't talked about yet, and now we're going to. Let me bring that out a little bit, okay. First, let's review the other rules of exponents you learned in beginning algebra. Um, let's see. Here, the base is x in both of these. The exponent here is two, the exponent here is three. When we multiply like bases, we write down the base once and we add the exponents. So you get x to the fifth. If you have a, <clears throat> a base raised to a power and then you raise it to a power again, you multiply the powers. And then this one I'm going to put over here because it's more closely related to the multiplication. And that is when you divide like bases. You write down the base once and you subtract the exponents, top minus bottom. And that gives you three minus two is one. So X to the one, which is X. Now we just spent the previous homework doing problems related to these rules. There are a few other rules like X to the zero power is one. Now what that means is any number raised to the zero power is one. Three to the zero power is one. All right, now a related rule that we dealt with. If you have X to the two, over x to the three, well, get so excited, equals x to the two minus three, which is x to the negative one. So you, you could have negative integer exponents. These are indications that the base is in the quote and unquote wrong place. This is one over X to the positive one, which is one over X. And so for instance, let's scroll up. Um, um, how about this? Three to the negative two is one over three to the positive two, which is one over nine. And one over three to the negative two is three to the positive two, which is nine. Again, we dealt with this in the previous homework, so let's move on to, to that other rule, <clears throat> that new rule that as inter al intermediate algebra students, the rule you have not encountered. 
until now. Suppose you take a route. It can be any kind of route. Checking on what my cat's done. He was just neutered today. And I've been told by the vet to not let him lick his stitches. Like, how can I stop it? I don't know. We may have to get him the uh, the cone of what is that? The cone of shame. That's right. From the movie Up. Anyway, suppose we take the nth root of a base. That's raised to a power. There's another way to write this. X to the M over N. Two different ways to write the same thing. You should be getting used to that now. Math is full of different ways to write the same thing. Let's get some real um, examples. How about the cube root of five squared? That could also be written five to the two over three. Notice how this power goes on top and makes the, the numerator of the fraction. And this index makes the denominator of the fraction. There are two ways of writing the same thing. So, this is called radical notation. Ah! My coffee was just attacked by a fly. It's summertime. Radical notation. And this is called exponential notation. The kind of root we're going to deal most with is the square root. The square root of 4 is 2, the principal square root. There is another root. Actually, all positive real numbers All positive real numbers have two square roots, really. A positive square root, which is called the principal square root, And that would be what I just wrote down. <clears throat> the square root of 4 equals 2. 2 is the principal square root of 4. It's the one we most commonly associate with the square root of 4. But there is a negative square root.
And you know that you're being asked for the negative square root when there's a negative sign in front of the square root sign. Here I'm asking for the negative square root, which is negative two. And if you doubt, if you doubt that this, that negative two is one of the square roots of four, let me just remind you that negative two squared is, let's put it in the calculator, but you have to have parentheses, remember, around negative numbers. Negative two squared equals four, positive four. That's what a square root is. A square root is a number like two, such that when you square it, you get the number under the square root sign. That's my boy cat being bad because he wants attention, which I gave him all day because he was recovering from his surgery. Now he wants more attention. But I have to give you guys attention. So I will. You're going to meet some other roots here. Like the cube root. The cube root of eight. Is two. Why? Because if I raise two to the third power, same as the index right there, two to the third power gives me the number under the square, uh, the cube root sign. Cube roots are cool. In fact, all odd roots are cool, but cube roots are cool because I can actually take the cube root of negative eight and that will equal negative two. Whereas if I try to take the square root of negative four, I'll get an error. Watch what happens. All right, the square root, second x squared, gives me square root of negative four. Enter. Non-real answer. Well, what that means is not what it seems to me. Okay. Uh, Non-real just means it's not in the real number system, which is the name that we give the number system we grow up with. Three apples plus two apples is five apples. That's the real number system. The answer here we're going to study during the last week of class. Well, yeah, during the last week. Wow. OK. Now, while we're here, let's talk about how you get the cube root. You have to hit the math button. And come down to. The third root or the cube root, which is number four. Come down here. And then hit enter. There's the cube root. I can take the cube root of eight. Hit enter, and I've got two. I can take the cube root of negative eight. And that just gives me negative two. But if I try taking the square root of, neg of a negative number, any negative number, I get non-real number, which is what the error message is called non-real 
number. I think that's what it is. Non-real. Okay, well you can see how that can be a real pain. Having to go to math and go down to cube root. And then for the higher roots, it's even worse. That's another reason that this, which is eight to the one, can be written as eight to the one over three. It's so much easier to deal with. Watch this, eight carat one divided by three and then right arrow key. Eight to the one third power is two. Oh dear, this is gonna be quite a night. So now we're going to move on and talk about the homework. You're being asked to rewrite x to the one third power without rational exponents. Well, how do you do that? This is a rational exponent, one over three. It's a fraction, so it's rational. Well, what this is, is, here's the base. The one goes in here, the three goes out here. And that's what you get, because x to the one power is just x. This is the cube root of x. How about 64 to the one third power? Well, that'll be the cube root of 64. Ah, but now let's put it in the calculator. The cube root math, come down to four, enter 64 to the one power, which is 64. Enter. Yes, that's four. Let's try 64 to the one third power. 64 carat one divided by three. It's four, same thing. Now seven. Seven is something we call an irrational number because if you take the square root of seven, you get a run on decimal and that decimal goes on forever and ever and ever. So we're going to write this with rational exponents. Seven is the base. There's a one here. There's an invisible two here. Let me make this bigger to make sure you can see it. Well, you can't see it right now. There you go. This, the square root of seven is, seven is to the one power, and there's an invisible index here that's two. So this is seven to the one half power. Any number raised to the one half power is really a square root. Seven to the one half power and the square root of seven are exactly the same thing. 
And there you have it. Now here we have 22. That's an irrational number. We're going to take the cube root of 22. Well, that will be 22. That's 22 to the one power. So 22 to the one over three power. Ooh, now we're going to rewrite some interesting things, or are we? Take a look. This whole thing is raised to the one fourth power. X, Y to the third, Z with parentheses around it to the one fourth power. Let's see if they agree. Yes, because these are grouped together underneath the radical sign, which is what we call that. It's not a square root sign, it's a radical sign and it's used for any root. You know what kind of root you're dealing with depending on the index. This is a fourth root. Now, 32 to the negative one fifth power they give us the answer here. I made it so that they would. So we're not supposed to know this. So pretend you don't know it. We're going to find out. Remember that a negative exponent shows that the base is in the wrong place. Thirty two wants to come down here where it'll be positive and happy. One over thirty two to the positive one fifth power. Now they're just asking for a number here. Rewrite thirty two to the negative one fifth with a positive a exponent which we now have. The exponent became positive once we moved the base 32 down to the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. Now, I'm going to take 32 caret one half, one divided by two, enter. No. Oh, one half, that's supposed to be one fifth because I already know what the answer is. Okay, forget that. 32 raised to the one divided by five power is two. There's a two down there. So the one is up here and 32 to the one fifth power, which is in the denominator, is two. So your answer is one half. Now this is tricky. You have to know what the base is. The base is X. not 2x. If the base were 2x, there, there would be parentheses around it. But this is two times, and could be written like this, two times x to the negative one ninth. 
all of it over one, at least mentally do that, because then you can take your X down here and you'll have two over X to the positive one ninth power. Yes, and they agree. Okay, we have two to the five tenths over two to the three tenths. That'll be two, the base, raised to the five tenths minus three tenths. That'll be two to the two tenths, which, no, we don't put it up there. Which is two to the one fifth. says use the laws of exponents to simplify. Now two to the one fifth power. Yes, that's how they want it written. Simplify your answer. Type exponential notation with rational exponents. So that means write it like that. This is exponential notation. Ah, remember this? When you have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again, <clears throat> you multiply the powers. So we will have the base three, which is already raised to the nine fourths powers, nine fourths power, times two sevenths. All right, two will go into four, won't it? If you multiply nine fourths times two sevenths, that's the same thing as nine over two times two times two sevenths, so that this two and this two cancel out. So that will be nine over two times one over seven, which is nine fourteenths. No, I don't want to do that. Three. Three to the nine fourteenths power. Now, is there a way to do this on the calculator? Well, after you get to this point, yes. Here's what you can do. Three. <clears throat> yes. Three carat parentheses nine divided by four, parentheses closed. You're still up in the exponent area, so parentheses two divided by seven, parentheses closed. Now you can come down, and now you can hit enter. <laughs> and then math frac. No, it's not going to work. No, I don't guess you can do it by hand. I mean, I don't guess you can do it with a calculator. You'll have to do it by hand. Now here we have a base raised to a power times a base raised to a power. So you write the base once and you add the powers. This you can do on your calculator. 
you can add four divided by three plus one divided by six. Math, frac, enter. Three over two. Or you can do it by hand. Three goes into six two times. So you can multiply four thirds by two over two. Two times four is eight, two times three is six. So this will be a to the eight sixths plus one sixth, which will be a to the nine sixths. Ah, but nine six has to be reduced because you know, and I know that three goes into nine and three goes into six evenly. Hello. Divide by three, divide by three. That will give you A to the three over two. But math fracking gives you the answer in lowest terms right away. Oh, that poor kitty. Here we have different bases, raised to powers. I cannot combine them because they're different bases. One is an A and one is a B. However, I can do this. This will be A to the 5 sixths times 5 times B to the 11 tenths times five. And we can put that five over one. Okay, now you can do two things. You can recognize that five goes into 10 two times, or you can multiply five times 11 and one times 10, and you'll have 55 over 10, and then you'll divide both by five. Either way, you're gonna have to reduce it. A to the five times five over six times one will be 25 6 times B to the 55 over 10. Divide both of these by 5. And that will make this 11 over 2. So A to the 25 over 6 times B to the 11 over two. I cannot let that cat keep crying. After all, he just had an operation today. Okay, we're back. Apparently the crisis has been averted and the kitties have stopped crying for a while. Let's go back and do some work. Now, when we left off, we had just multiplied a base to a power times a base to a power, all of that to another power. These are different bases, so we can't combine the bases. And there's our answer. And that's how I got it. Now, starting at number 12, we have x to the 7 fifths power times 
negative 5 over 3. Pretty cool. The 5's cancel, leaving a negative 1 here. That will be 7 times negative 1 is negative 7 over 3. So the answer should be, ah, right, x to the negative 7 thirds, but rewrite using only positive rational exponents, we have to translate this. Oops, where did my problem go? There it is. This is 1 over x to the positive 7 thirds. Almost forgot that last step. Be careful. Now look at that. Is it even possible to do that? Yeah, it is. Let's do it. Basic rule, when you have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. Here the bases are different, so I can't combine them. And I have a cattail. Hello, this is Kitty Love. If you can see her, I don't know if you can, but she's going to help me teach. Mm -hmm. So here we go. M to the negative one fourth times negative 12 over five times n to the negative 5 sixths times negative 12 over 5. My goodness, we've got a lot of cancellation here. The 5s can't, well, here, let's start here. 4 goes into 12 three times. So on top, I have negative one times negative three over five. Over here, look at this, this is terrific. The fives cancel. And uh, six, goes into 12 two times. So I'm going to have negative one times negative two, that'll be n to the positive two. So this will be m to the negative one times negative three, that'll be positive three over five times n to the negative one, um, yeah, because five goes into five one time, five goes into five one time. There's really always a one when you cancel. There's a one here also. Four goes into four one times, Four goes into 12 three times. You just get to where you ignore it. Uh, negative one times negative two is positive two over one. So that'll be squared. And we agree. Oh, is that it? 
No, it can't be. It is. Well, doggone, talk to you later.